Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've got a brand new piece from DailyHodl.com titled Ripple Spring Reveals New Push to Expand XRP Ecosystem. I'm going to be covering this brand new piece with you. I've touched on this topic recently, but it's got some details that I have not discussed. And it's always interesting to hear uh, various writers' points of view anyway. Uh, also, I want to tell you about the reason that Interledger Protocol exists. Yeah, I've got some news on that. Uh, it was specifically from former Ripple employee Bob Way. He let something out on Twitter today. Endlessly insightful. Man, I wish I lived inside that guy's brain. He, had, he knows so much stuff about Ripple and XRP. I'm sure he's got all sorts of non-disclosure agreements and can't tell us everything. But man, if I could just uh, if I could just know what he knows, that would be fantastic. So I'll be covering that. Uh, I've also got a piece, uh, this will be covered towards the end of the video since it's not specifically about XRP, but uh, there's somebody who is freshly claiming to be Satoshi Nakamoto, yes, the inventor of uh, the inventor of Bitcoin. We got somebody claiming, hip, I'm Satoshi. All right, so before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Have yourself a fun little Sunday. Treat yourself, girl. All right, into the content now. The leader of Ripple's fundraising arm, Spring, is revealing new details on how the initiative is working to expand the development and adoption of the digital asset XRP. Spring is widely known for investing in a variety of blockchain companies that could play a role in pushing the real-world use of XRP. But on the latest episode of the Ripple Drop, Ripple's senior vice president of Spring, Ethan Beard, says the initiative is also directly developing tools to help grow the XRP ecosystem. And here's a quote now. One of the areas that I'm most excited about is that we're really starting to layer in developer tools inside of Spring and looking to make Spring much more of a developer platform. So the team has significantly grown. We're probably 10 times what we were a year ago in terms of people. The vast, vast majority of the team is engineers, but we're putting in place uh, what we're putting in place is the tooling to make it really simple to build with XRP. We're building out APIs, SDKs, and various libraries and services to make it so that anyone who wants to come along and build on XRP can do so very easily. And then we'll also be spending a lot of time bringing uh, these products to market and reaching developers. Uh, wherever they are around the world. So keep your eyes open. You may even see Spring Developer Conference somewhere along the line as well. That would be pretty cool, by the way. I would love to see that, uh, <laughs> that develop out. Uh, look, look, the Spring is super important. And so uh, I, I love, first of all, that Ripple is actually <laughs> going out there and building on the, building out the XRP ecosystem as if it's, like, it's their sole responsibility. And it's certainly not because XRP is a decentralized cryptocurrency. The XRP ledger, uh, of course, is just, you know, distributed ledger technology makes that possible. And so anybody can build on top of it. But, man, Ripple is really, really taking the charge here. And the more <laughs> – here's the way I look at it because, look – there's no way that every single idea that people have uh, on, as far as ways to build on top of the XRP ledger, ways to utilize Internet Ledger Protocol and get crypto moving, there's no way that all of these ideas are good ideas. There, there's no way that they're all going to work. All I'm counting on is at least, as long as at least one of them works, I think that XRP is going to have some staying power. So I like that they're putting as much out there as possible. And you have to think out, outside the box for stuff like this. But uh, it's, it's okay. I don't care how many disastrous failures there are. As long as there's at least one success, then there's a reason for XRP to have stay in power. So that's perfectly fine. But that said, I, I, there probably realistically are multiple uh, use cases. Specifically, I cannot imagine XRP not having stay in power just for its value as a bridge currency for cross-border payments. I'd also, seriously, I would be really surprised if the concept of uh, web monetization, the way that uh, Coil envisions it, I'd be really shocked if that is not something that people liked on a large scale. I would really be shocked. Because think about it. And look, I don't think that paywalls are going away. I think some, some websites are going to want their websites to be subscription-based. That's fine. People have their own incentives for how they want their websites up, that set up. That's fine. Uh, some people are going to want ad revenue. I get it. And not everybody's going to pay $5 a month to get rid of ads. But I think that some will. I think a lot of people will. And uh, like I'm, I'm one of them. Like, I hate advertisements. I hate 
paywalls even more than advertisements, you know? And so uh, now that there's technology that would allow us to like beat that, oh my gosh, I just want it to be adopted so badly. So anyway, I, I think those two have such legitimate use and, and such value, I'd really be surprised if they didn't make it. But, but anyways, look, there are all sorts of other ideas out there, and I again, I just don't expect everything to pan out. But I like that Ripple's tried, and I like that they're very serious about the Spring Initiative. They're very serious about building out, uh, making sure that the, the uh, well, blockchain is adopted in a much more notable way and that uh, they're doing their part to make sure that the crypto asset class is here to stay and and it's look the bottom line is and it's it's here's the reason and you may have heard me say this before but there are also a lot of new subscribers so i'm happy to repeat this but the reason that i believe cryptocurrencies are not going away it's not what you would think if you're just jumping into this space you might think so you're saying that these cryptocurrencies are going to be used in the place of money this or that i'm not even positing that idea i mean maybe that could work over the span of decades i'd said that i'm like i'm not ruling out the possibility of that but the reason, from my perspective, the most obvious reason that cryptocurrencies will not ever go away is because there are businesses being built on top of blockchains, on top of the XRP ledger also, which is a blockchain, but it just they like to use the term ledger, that's fine. I don't know who started that, but it, it's a blockchain. Anyway, but uh, the, the, the reason that uh, cryptocurrencies are not going away is because you can have businesses built on top that otherwise absolutely, from a technological perspective, could not exist. And if you think that people, as a result, are not going to, as a result, value the digital assets that are native to specific blockchains, like <clears throat> XRP, you gotta be nuts. Of course they're going to. And most people don't understand what's happening right now. And that's why I'm so, I feel so fortunate to have stumbled into this. And then, because I, 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 you know, I bought, uh, I, I read a terrible article. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I covered it in my very first video on YouTube ever. Is about, there's something terrible happened with Ethereum. I really don't remember the specifics. Maybe it was a hacking or something like that. And then I read that and I was like, huh, I'm going to buy cryptocurrency. <laughs> and I just don't know whim. I've only put it a little bit. I was like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll, I'll figure it out later. And I had no idea the world I was like stumbling into. And then when I found out about XRP, I was like, holy crap. I just felt like I just found this gym. Like there's just one gym like buried in a field somewhere, a gigantic field. And I found this one little gym. And, uh, and that, that really is what it feels like. And I bet that some of you would probably say you share that sentiment there because the vast majority of the world doesn't even know XRP exists, but it is here and it is not going away. So anyway, the reason that I, I don't think, again, that uh, I know cryptocurrencies aren't going away is because you can do things with them that technologically were not possible prior to that. Businesses will exist. And of course, as a result, the underlying assets that make it possible will be valued. They, they have value and they should have a market price also. So I think it's incredible. Um... And then so the piece continues, so far Spring has invested at least $500 million in more than 20 blockchain and crypto related companies. Spring recently revealed it's awarded a grant to the micro payment startup Coil and will give the company 1 billion XRP, billion with a B, to build out its business model of helping creators monetize their content on the web. Ripple also created a $100 million fund with a blockchain gaming company Forte. I also covered that recently, um, which will be using uh, used to bring digital assets like XRP to thriving mainstream video games with large numbers of daily active users. And um, although it doesn't state it in this particular piece, they were talking specifically about settlement. So it's not necessarily that you'd be spending XRP in the game. The transactions would take place however they would otherwise normally take place. Seemingly, anyway, and then XRP could be used in the background. Anyway, uh, here's a look at some of Spring's other investments. You've got Kava Labs, which is developing an open payment system for cryptocurrencies. You've got Dharma Protocol, which aims to create a crypto-based decentralized loan platform. Now, that's awesome. I would, I would love to see if that takes off. I'm very curious about this one. I don't even know if it's a good idea. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Very curious, though. Uh, Raised in Space Enterprises, a startup that plans to use... Digital assets like XRP to revitalize the music industry. And then we got XRP uh, Labs, a new company created by the avid XRP developer Weetse Wind, who, by the way, also created the XRP tip bot. I'm sure some of you are aware of that. You got Robot Ventures in March, an early stage venture capital firm that invests in fintech and crypto companies. And then you've got Sinfriend, which will use Ripple's XRP based payment solution XRapid to lower the cost of sending money overseas there is so much going on if this, that's why when i look at the price action that's happened in the last few days and yeah okay it's awesome xrp's up as i speak i think what is it right now 
you know, I don't remember. It, it's Is it like 28 cents or something? Right now? I don't know. Whatever it is, it was as low as 24 cents or so just a couple days ago. And that is not reflective of the ecosystem that's getting built out here. And so while people are panic selling, I'm just like, eh, let humans be humans. I don't care. Like, I really, I mean, I'm going to follow it because, yes, I'm a YouTuber and I, I report on stuff. Fine. But uh, it's not something that's going to shake me to where I'm like, oh, my God. Does this mean the end of XRP? Like, some people think it's end of day stuff. It's just humans being irrational. That's all it is. You look at all this stuff being built out. That hasn't changed. It's still here. You think, you think Ripple sees the price, for instance, or any developer, really? You think they see the price go from, like, 30 cents down to 24 cents? They're like, that's it. Pack up. We're done. We tried. Hey, we gave it the old college try. Didn't really pan out. We're done here. No, of course not. It is not going away. Of course this is being built out. Oh, man, I'm going to hold on to my XRP forever, or at least some of it. I, I don't care. Like, um, And we may be far away from the next bull run, or maybe we're not. I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, I'm never going to sell all of my XRP no matter what. I mean, yes, I would like to have profits at some point. That's fine. But uh, I have too much fun following this, so I'm never going to unload all of it. <laughs> all right, check this tweet out now. This was cool here. I had never heard this before. Um, I covered part of this thread the other day, so I'm not going to read through the whole thing. But there's new tweets from today thanks to XRP Research Center. And I will start here. Check this out. This is about Coil, Codius, and ILP. This is cool stuff. So XRP Research Center wrote, Hi, Bob. And again, Bob Way, former Ripple employee. He was their 10th employee ever. Uh, and um, he worked with them until, I want to say, May of 2018. And then happily parted ways. Nothing bad happened or anything. He's a valued member of the XRP community. Anyway. <clears throat> So XRP Research Center writes, Hi, Bob. Do you think Codius could have a role in this vision about continuous and simultaneous multilateral payment flow? I mean, you'd probably need a smart layer to coordinate the liquidity sufficiency across the pathways made available by ILP connectors. And Bob writes, Absolutely. It is interesting to realize that, check this out, Coil is a contradiction of Codius and ILP. Ben is a very clever guy. It is also interesting to realize that ILP was originally invented as a thought exercise in how to pay for Codius contracts running in the cloud. Never heard that before. That was Let me read that again. It is also interesting to realize that ILP, Interledger Protocol, was originally invented as a thought exercise in how to pay for Codius contracts running in the cloud. Huh. How about that? Yeah, he's definitely the first one to, to say that that I'm aware of anyway. And then uh, XRP Research Center responded, wow. <laughs> Thanks for the valuable insights, Bob. Yeah, that's pretty much my response too. Like, wow, that's why it's here. <laughs> because you know, put it all together, right? Oh, wow. Anyway, um, there it's no doubt that uh, these technologies are still in very early stages. I'm really excited about what the future um, has, has got for us. Really cool stuff here. All right, uh, here's something that I got tagged in by Sean Carrier. And here it's, uh, here it's, I think they're referencing you. And so I was like, hmm, what could this be? And they're not literally referencing me, but it's down here. It's, I think it's towards the bottom. Uh, you know, I'm going to read the title of this piece. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's from CryptoNews.com, and it's titled The Road of the Bitcoin Family. We're spending Bitcoin for 2.5 years. And so, the, yeah, these people, they just, like, they put everything in Bitcoin, this family, basically. And so, anyway, I was looking down here, and here's, here's what he was talking about. And, man, I'll tell you, when I entered the crypto space... Like, the idea, of people kept saying stuff about when moon, when Lambo, and I was like, what are these idiots talking about? And so, like, I, I, and so, like, when I was coming up with a name when I was joining Twitter, I was, I was speaking to my girlfriend, Michelle, and we were, I know some of you have heard me say this before, but there are new subscribers, so I'm just going to mention it real quick. So I was like, what should my name on, on Twitter be? And, uh, and we went back and forth, couldn't think of anything that, uh, that really was clever enough, or anything, like, nothing sounds good. And then out of nowhere, she says, Moon Lambo. <laughs> We just started cracking up. We're like, that is the stupidest name possible. Yes, I am Moon Lambo. So anyway, so anyway, that's what we did. So check this out. So here's an interview with this guy. It doesn't matter what the guy's name is, but it's the guy on the screen here. Uh, I'm circling with my mouse. That's him right there getting interviewed here. And uh, so he was posed this question. Uh, when a journalist asked you about a crypto market crash, you answered, we still have the same amount of Bitcoin. Do you people really understand the importance of Bitcoin? And then here's his answer. Because of the huge profits people have been making, the mentality of the revolution has changed to mooning and Lambo. <laughs> and so I started laughing when I saw that. I was like, yep, that sounds about right. That's what it was when I entered the world of crypto. Anyway, don't get me wrong, I'm really happy for those that made huge profits and think it's possible to make some more huge profits in the future. 
but I just hope that people keep in mind what the true fundamentals are and that Bitcoin is here to exclu- include the, uh, the excluded. We need to start sharing a bit more people, uh, a bit more with the people that really need it. And by giving instead of just accumulated, accumulating, you will also understand the true meaning of life. Uh, this is a unique individual, by the way. He is rather unique. Uh, let's just say that. He seems like a friendly enough dude, though. But uh, yeah, the whole mooning and Lambo thing. So yeah, there we are. <laughs> You know what's so funny to me too? A lot of people, and I don't blame anybody for thinking this, but when they see my name, they're, they must be they're like, "What? That must be an absolute idiot." Which is the response I'm looking for, by the way. Like, I want people to be like, "Your name's Moon Lambo. Can't take that seriously." <laughs> Meanwhile, the content on my channel couldn't be more serious. Anyway, uh, next piece here. This is from DailyHodl.com. Self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto promises to reveal identity. And confirm $10 billion Bitcoin fortune. Huh, do you think that this could be real? Let's read into it. All right. A new self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto has emerged, declaring he is the anonymous creator of Bitcoin. I thought it was Craig Wright. Is it not Craig Wright? What's going on here? (laughs) The company Satoshi Nakamoto Renaissance, SNR Holdings, is promising Satoshi will break his silence and take the first step toward proving his identity today. According to a press release, here's a quote, after a decade of anonymity, Satoshi Nakamoto will break his silence in part one of his My Reveal, Sunday, August 18th at 4 p.m. In addition to his real-life identity, Nakamoto will use My Reveal to divulge such facts as his country of origin, education, professional background, and why he has yet to move any of his 980,000 bitcoins. One of the few ways the real Satoshi could prove his or her identity is to move bitcoins out of one of the very first and oldest blocks on the ledger. Litecoin creator Charlie Lee says there's only one way for the true creator of bitcoin to step forward. While first genesis block bitcoins can't be moved, the private key can be used to sign a message and the real Satoshi can do it. According to SNR, the proof will be released on its website and the site for the digital marketing agency Ivy McLemore and Associates. SNR's site is currently extremely bare, featuring two lines of text promising the reveal of Satoshi, as well as an email subscription box. SNR promises that the so-called Satoshi will also detail his vision for the future of the leading cryptocurrency. And here's a quote. Indicative of the compelling evidence he presents in each part of the series, Nakamoto will illustrate the role that ciphers and encryption related to his devotion to Chaldean numerology played in many decisions uh, in his creation of Bitcoin. Nakamoto also will disclose why he chose the date August 18 not only to register Bitcoin.org in 2008, but also to release part one of My Reveal, this coming Sunday on the 11th anniversary of his registration of Bitcoin.org uh, through an anonymousspeech.com. Nakamoto's revelations will culminate Tuesday in Part 3 with his introduction of Tabula Rasa, his clean slate vision for Bitcoin's transformational rebirth and the declaration of his identity. Ivy McLemore told CCN it is Nakamoto's official spokesman and says the three-part series will answer all questions. As for the question on whether the whole effort is an elaborate PR stunt, McLemore said, absolutely not. What do you think? I'm a little skeptical, all right? (laughs) Why are we waiting this long? It's it's finally just coming out of hiding. Yes, it's me. I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. What's Craig Wright think about all this stuff? Hmm, I'm very curious here. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not. But I'm definitely skeptical. I think that's kind of reasonable, right? You let me know what you think below. Uh, That's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambeau!